My wife is divorcing me. Why? Well, she's trying to pull something on me, a giant stunt. She thinks she's going to get a large amount of money. But there's a secret I haven't told her yet. Let me share it with you. Ah, people can be so funny sometimes. They would go to any length to use you and hurt you. And when you do the same to them, you suddenly become the bad guy. I'm 51, male, and this is about my second wife, Elier. Elier and I have been together for more than three years. I lost my first wife to a car accident 10 years ago when my daughter was 12 years old. I've been single since then. Three years ago, I met Elier at a bar. My daughter turned 18 that year and moved out to Mer College in Manhattan. It was a very lonely phase of my life and I used to hit the bar almost every day after work. When I lost my first wife, it was indeed a very difficult phase of my life, but I had to quickly bounce back to life because of my daughter. I had to be strong for her. We both were each other's support system. Hence, when she left for college, my life became a void, and I started drinking regularly and sat at the bar until midnight to kill my boredom. Elier was the bartender at that place, and since I was a regular and probably the only one who sat there until midnight, most of the staff knew me. After a week or so, Elier approached me and asked me if I was doing okay. That's how we became friends and started to date. She was way younger than me, so I wasn't sure before taking it to the next level. But Elier made the first move and it asked me out. It was a good distraction for me to kill my loneliness. But I've never thought about having a long-term relationship with her, merely because she's 11 years younger than I. But she was well matured for her age. She was a single mother to a two-year-old son. Her boyfriend abandoned her when she was pregnant, hence she's been raising the kid alone. We connected over our stories. When it started getting serious between us, I informed my daughter about it, and she kind of supported me to take it forward. She knew how lonely I'd been when she moved, and she wanted the best for me. So, after a year of dating, we married in a close ceremony. Elier had no family members apart from her son and her sister. They both were abandoned by their parents when they were toddlers, and they were raised in an orphanage until they both moved out to make a living of their own. Is it true that loneliness makes you vulnerable? That's what's happening to me. I mean, I was very vulnerable at the time, hence I never thought anything and just went with the flow of falling for Elier. The first year of our married life was so great. We were happy and in love and went on trips and parties. Her son was a little munchkin roaming about in the house. It made me reminisce about the time when my daughter was his age and used to run around the house. I loved her son as my own. Elier soon left her job because she wanted to give full time to her son, who she had been neglecting all those years for her career. I didn't mind her leaving the workforce because I was earning decently. I have a real estate firm which is kind of my family business because my father started it. After his retirement, I just took it over. It was during my school year of marriage when my daughter visited me for Christmas. She asked me to be cautious about spending money on Ilano. Until then, I just thought I was providing for her and fulfilling all her demands because I wanted to keep her happy. I used to treat my first wife in a similar way, but she was a simple woman and didn't have a taste for expensive items. But Elor, oh, Elor was a fashionista and had a thing for expensive clothes and accessories. Maybe that's when my daughter saw it from a neutral lens and she just sensed something. That's why you should not feel less yourself in a relationship, else you would end up following your partner like a puppy. In my case, I felt she was way younger and beautiful to be married to me. Hence, I pampered her to the core. That's where I went wrong. After my daughter cautioned me about overspending, I kept a check on fulfilling Elor's demands. This did not go well with Elor. She added the math and concluded that my daughter had instigated me against her. Soon after our marriage, when Elor left her job, she asked me if we could have a joint account. The reason was that she did not want to ask me for money every time she needed it, and I could not give away my cards too well to see her swipe. 
so a joint account seemed to be a better idea. Although I was the only one putting money into it because she was not earning, it was a joint account, so we both had access to it. When my daughter heeded me, I curbed the amount I used to put into the account. The account was more like a refill counter. I used to fill it with my money and she used to empty it. In the initial days, she was grateful for everything I did for her. As soon as I got serious about her, I got her son moved from a community school to one of the best schools in the town where my daughter used to go. She thanked me profusely that day, and even when I took her out for lunch and dinner and fancy places, she used to feel gratitude about us. But eventually, after our marriage, she started feeling entitled to everything as if she had earned it. All this piled up and bothered me. Things started getting ugly after our second year anniversary. Elor's expectations were increasing day by day, and she wanted all of them to be fulfilled right away. That's when I started pulling back the strings. I told her that her expenses were over the roof and unnecessary, so she needed to curb them. She got defensive at this and started showing her true colors. She became more and more distant from me and we barely used to see each other. By the time I came back from work, she used to be out partying with friends, leaving her five-year-old son at home or at her sister's place. I just used to spend time with her son. The poor soul was at no fault. I was at the stage of my life where I did not want any drama in it, so I let her be. However, I just reduced the money that I used to deposit into the account. This made her so mad. She needed anything but money when I reduced the money I deposited into the joint account. She started demanding it up front. It was difficult for me to say no right to the face. So I gave her a few times the money. But when it increased, I stopped it. She got extremely violent at this point and said I was pushing her buttons and forcing her to do something that she did not want to do. So I asked her what that was. She told me I would soon get to know if I continued to be oh so stingy. She went on to say, and I quote, let me make this straight. You're not doing a favor to me by providing for me. You know you don't deserve this beautiful young wife that I am, yet you have me. So be happy with it and let me do whatever makes me happy. She stormed out of the house and went somewhere and she did not come home that night and neither did I bother to check up on her. The next day she came back home, but we both continued to maintain the distance. While all these were still going on, one day I came home early to find her sleeping with another man. It was her friend, somebody who used to be in the same orphan orange as her. I felt as if she was not even trying to hide us when I entered the home. The man came out of my bedroom, buttoning up his shirt, and he looked at me left and right, and it happened so suddenly that I did not even have time to react, and he was gone by the time reality hit me. He was out of there also. I'm not a violent person who overreacts over something quickly. When I think back, I think I always knew that to be coming. Hence, when I saw that man come out of my bedroom, I did not even find it surprising. So, when I entered my bedroom, she was dressing herself. That was it. I still did not raise my voice. However, I just asked her if she's cheating on me, and she said yes. I sensed Elor wanted to trigger me, and I avoided being trapped in her plan. So, I calmly asked her to leave. She wasn't shocked, neither was she fighting back, probably prepared for it or maybe she had planned for it. I don't know. She starts packing her stuff. I realized her son was not at home and I did not even ask her. She left the house taking away some of her belongings. A week later, she comes back while I was at home. I saw her but ignored it and she handed me divorce papers. She said I was getting suffocating and controlling and hinted she needed to be free. The divorce actually came as a surprise. If somebody leeching on your money wants a divorce, it means that they're up to something big. So I sensed it was alimony and flipped the papers to the page where it was mentioned. There it was, half a million dollars from my parents' trust fund is what she's demanding. You see, I'm from a pretty well-off family. My parents had a few million in the trust fund, and since I was the only son of my parents, she assumed that I would have the money. 
Once I was speaking to the trust committee regarding something and she heard it, she casually asks me about it, and I did not deny it at all and told her all about it. It was during the initial days of our marriage and seeing her demand half a million from the trust, I literally laughed in her face because she did not know anything about that trust fund. I start laughing hard and said that she's funny to think that she would get the trust fund money. She bit her lips and said that she would get to any level to get that money because apparently that money is hers. Now, yeah, right. This happened three days ago and I spoke to my lawyer today and told him about everything. He gave me a few pointers to sleep on before making a decision. One such is paying for Elor's son's education. However much I hate that woman, I don't want her son to suffer. I'm thinking of taking responsibility for her son's education, but let's see how things get unfolded. I'll make an update once I'm able to move forward with these divorce proceedings. Update number one. So, the last few months have been hectic, guys. I just had to let it all sort out. I have not signed the divorce papers yet, and Elor thinks that she's at an advantage. She thinks I want her back, hence I'm delaying the process, but she doesn't know anything. The trust fund does not belong to me. My parents have willed it for my daughter, and I agreed to that. The income I'm generating from my business is sufficient to keep my expenses afloat, but Elor didn't know this. Her lawyer approached us for an out-of-court settlement. He said there's no need for a long, lengthy court battle if I agree to give in to her demands and get done with the divorce already. He said that since I'm not able to provide for her lifestyle, it's better that she takes away what is hers and moves on. Really? What is hers? She has nothing, she deserves nothing. We didn't fight back, saying we wanted to make the matter the court case, because we did not agree to her terms. I did not burst her bubble and did not tell her about the trust fund money belonging to my daughter. I let her live in her delusional little life. Meanwhile, she was trying her best to make me feel jealous. She posted pictures of herself with her boyfriend every other day in fancy restaurants, spa, vacations, you name it. I realized she was using the money from the joint account to fool around with her loser boyfriend. I was depositing the money into that account for her son, but she chose her temporary lavish lifestyle over her son's education. There wasn't much money left in the account by the time, so I let her use it all. Even if I closed it, half the money would have gone to her, so there's no point in closing it. I didn't want to give her any hint on my next move, so I kept it low-key and let her be. When the money was gone, she was expecting it to be refilled at the start of the month as usual, but I didn't do it. I let her wait and plead, and she messaged me that I needed to deposit the money for her son's school fees and for other household needs, but I ignored her. She turned abusive at my ignorance and said that she would take revenge for every penny I was depriving her of. When she was done venting out, I went to the bank and closed the joint account on the grounds of ongoing divorce. The moment that she got the notification of the account's closure, she charged me, spamming my phone with all sorts of abusive messages and voicemails. I saved every one of them. You understand what I was going to do about it, right? In fact, I saved some of her bikini photos with her boyfriend on that vacation. On the day of our first court hearing, she had the audacity to come to the court in arms with her drug-addicted boyfriend. I'll get to that part in a minute. When I saw her outside the court, she was all dressed up in brand clothing, flaunting herself in a way that she was about an inch away from hitting the jackpot. She smirked at me as if she was about to take my everything. When I saw her evil face, I pitied her son. She was destroying his life and people like her should not be allowed to give birth because they're responsible for raising a damaged and hollow person. When the court proceedings began and my attorney started defending my case, her face turned pale. She reacted so funnily when my lawyer revealed that the trust fund had been willed to my daughter. It was not my property and she could not demand it for alimony. She pulled the lawyer aside and they came back with a new set of demands. They asked for the house and shares in my business and to their disappointment, 
The house as well as the business all belong to the trust, which is now my daughter's. After my wife passed away, my parents sat me down and told me that they were transferring the will to my daughter's name just to safeguard the property in case something like this happens. My father told me that I might be vulnerable and fall prey to women who would fall after me just for money. I now feel that their prophecy to be true. When they told me about this, I laughed at them and said I would never fall for such a woman and that I was smart. Well, looks like they were right. Sometimes you fail to recognize the imposters like Elor who suck onto you just for the money. I won't blame anybody but my vulnerability or maybe loneliness that I failed to see through her fake mask of love and compassion. When she could not get anything from me, she demanded child support. But before my attorney could defend my case, the judge dismissed the pleadings and asked for them to file a fresh set of terms because according to the law, you can't place a fresh demand on the spot. The judge said it was not her shopping boutique that she could bargain with however she wanted. Court was dismissed and a next date was given after a week or so. We received the document with a fresh set of terms, $5,000 monthly allowance for herself as she was not working and child support for her son. I could have agreed to the child support if she had not wasted the money from the joint account to rub the vacation pictures in my face. I was determined not to agree to any of her terms, and my lawyer did his job well in preparing my case. Me and my lawyer dug all sorts of information required to leave her penniless. The next hearing day was almost a month later. She came to the court with her usual swag, but the glow was less compared to the last time. The sorrow of losing the opportunity to get a dime of my property took away her blow. My lawyer defended her terms. Child support was the easiest one to get rid of because he was not my son. They still wanted it on moral grounds as a stepfather, but my lawyer just argued that she was flaunting the money from the joint account on her vacations. Well, she's not using it for her son's education. I told the court the same thing as I mentioned above. I did not mind providing the education for the child, but she would just misuse it for her own gains. For her claim of $5,000 a month, my attorney presented all the photographs of her vacationing with her boyfriend with my money and then abusing me over chats and voicemails for not providing her enough. We alleged a case of verbal abuse on her and used it to dodge the monthly allowance. It wasn't as easy and smooth as it sounded in a single sentence, but yeah, finally the court dismissed all her stupid terms and granted a divorce on the basis of verbal abuse, torture, and money extortion. The court even asked us if I wanted to sue her for these allegations, but I did not. I know she had nothing to pay the compensation anyways and my motive was just to not leave her a penny, and that was successful. Winning a case against a woman is not easy in court these days, but if you're genuine and cautious, and plus, if you hire a good lawyer, then it's possible. I'm planning to visit my daughter and spend time with her, away from this place. I hope I get over it soon. This time I'm not going to repeat the mistake I made with Elier. I've let my loneliness shadow my reasoning, but now I'm planning various ways to keep myself distracted, and marriage is now off my radar forever. I'll make an update if anything develops, otherwise this will be the end of it. Thanks for engaging in my post, and please don't make a decision just because you're lonely and desperate to have somebody by your side. Update number two. Hey guys, I was lurking around on this page lately, so I thought about updating it because, well, why not? As I closed my last post, I mentioned my divorce from Elier. Apparently, she was tired of asking me for the money every time she needed something, and she was annoyed when I said no, so she thought of a better option. Divorcing me and taking half a million dollars from a trust fund. Funny, yeah, jokes on her that she did not get a penny. I think I forgot to mention a few details about her boyfriend in the last update, so here it is. During the divorce proceedings, I got to know that the boyfriend with whom she was fooling around was the actual father of her son. 
He abandoned her when she was pregnant, but when she started flaunting her newfound, profound lifestyle right there on social media, he came rolling back to her, and she accepted him because he was the father of her son. That was the reason he roamed around in my house, having fun with her. Apparently, I was the other guy for him, and he was the father of her child. Funny enough, a couple months later, when I came back home after visiting my daughter in Manhattan, I got Ailier's letter in the postbox. The thing is, I had blocked her from all places, so there's no way she could have contacted me through my phone or email. I'm guessing she would have come to visit me, but I wasn't around for two months. Hence, she just dropped off the letters. Well, it was about how sorry she was to hurt me, and on a humanitarian ground, she wanted me to provide for her son. She needed me to pay for school fees so that he could continue his education. Not sure if I've mentioned this before, but I got him admitted to an international school. He used to study in a community school before. I discussed it with my lawyer, and he said on a professional note that if I wanted, I could go with providing the school fees for her son by paying directly to the school. But personally, he suggested I stay away from that woman. He said that the woman might further try to squeeze in money from me on the pretext of her son's needs. Well, he was right. It was not just about the school fees in an international school. Apart from the fees, there were thousands of different things like excursions, projects, and whatnot to provide extra, and she would definitely use those reasons to extort money from me. Even if she did not extort the money from me, she would not be able to afford those extras on her own, so there's no point in paying the fees. I felt bad for letting that child suffer, but there's no other solution to this. I thanked my stars that I did not plan a child with her. That would have been such a disastrous situation. But thank goodness I'm out of this. In the last two months of living with my daughter, I've moved on a lot. I've started hitting the gym regularly, and I'm also planning a lot of solo trips to get perspective in life. Thank you for hearing my story, and please take this lesson to keep your vulnerability in check. All right, guys, I do want to know your thoughts about this. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about the comments from the original post and the updates. A lot of people were saying how OP should have given some of the money for the kid to go to a better school. Guys, a lot of other commenters were arguing, saying it's not his kid, it's not his responsibility. Yeah, it's probably not the best environment for the kid to grow up in, but it's not OP's job to make that environment better. Let me know your thoughts about this story. This one was a wild ride, and I was just thinking during it, the audacity of some people. My name is Mr. Rado, and I narrate stories every single day. If you guys want to be involved in the channel and see daily videos, there's three ways to support me. Go ahead and drop a comment. Go ahead and drop a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow and remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace out.